They say winning ain't everything. Well, we don't have them tight conversations over here, man. Had that conversation with the losers. We trying to win at everything we do. Even in the loss, we don't see defeat. We see a lesson learned. Straight up. Look, I came into this world in 1978. The doc looked me in my face and knew I was something great. 45, 42 Prescott, that's where I'm from. Grew up in the slums around dope dealers and bums. As humble as I was, I adapted to my habitat. In my own lane, though. No. Far from where they crashing that dumb bar graduate. The game out of mass it. Served in the Navy, look. Y'all don't know the half of it. Pops passing no one. Moms passed last year. I know they up in heaven smiling down, crying mad tears. Cause they saw I'm making it. No telling where I'm taking it. My city been cursed, but I feel that I'm breaking it. Coached at Wayne High in 15 in one state. Seen the fork in the road and went straight. I know what I'm worth. I'm OG King Kirk, Brooklyn Nets gaming crew legend. Let's work. Hey, this is OG King Kirk, your host of the OG Two Cents podcast. I want to thank each and every one of you who continue to tune in each and every week. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share it. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a five star rating. Helps us out a lot. Links for all available platforms will be in the description. Let's continue to stand up against any forms of social injustice and racism. And also hashtag see more love. The Zenny way. This episode is brought to you by Zenny Blocks. Make sure to armor your eyes with Zenny Blocks virtual clear blue blockers. It's important to protect your eyes from the harmful blue light from your digital screens. So you have less eye strain and that makes for better sleep and performance. Check them out at zenny.com slash gaming or follow them at Zenny Gaming on Twitter and Instagram. This episode, episode 77, Jack of All Trades with Jack Muscone, a.k.a. JBM. The 2020 number one pick may not have won rookie of the year, but his resume is pristine and includes the most important accolade two NBA 2K League championships. Jack Muscone, more prominently known as JBM, shocked the NBA 2K community when he recently announced his retirement. But he leaves the competitive scene at the top of the mountain. In his rookie season with Wizards District Gaming, we saw him elevate his game in the playoffs and ultimately save his best for last, dropping 46 points in a championship clinching game. This past season, he averaged 22.7 points and 11.3 assists in the finals, earning himself finals MVP. JBM was also recognized for his elite regular season play and was named to the All-NBA 2K League second team and was voted onto the Eastern Conference All-Star roster. Outside of the 2K League, his his accomplishments also include representing the Team USA, and being named the MVP of the FIBA Esports Open North and Central American Conference. I've known JBM quite a while since he was a teenager, all the way up into his young adult years now, and it gives me nothing but pleasure to bring to you JBM. So, JBM, how you doing, man? I'm good. It's a uh, definitely experiencing, like, a huge change of pace from, you know, Having 2K is a huge part of my life to, you know, trying to not include it in my life and, you know, just get back to a regular lifestyle. So it's been an adjusting period, but I, uh, you know, I, I'm finding myself like doing things I haven't done in a while. I'm starting to play basketball like every day. And you know, I grew up, I love basketball. I just, I lost my passion when I started playing tennis and 2K. And so I'm doing that again and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself working on some stuff. It's everything's been good. Yeah. I mean, from the looks of it uh, on social, you've been having a, a, a enjoying your off season to the fullest. And I'm excited about this interview because you're somebody I've known since you were a kid and now you, you know, you're a young adult and um, got the chance to see you at some success of where I first met you. And then now obviously you, you know, you're moving on to uh, which as I know will be bigger and, and better things for yourself. Uh, but to jump right into this interview, a lot of people know you, of course. Uh, some people may not know you, but I want you to just walk us down uh, the aisle of your journey uh, to the NBA 2K League and beyond. 
Yeah, so it started in um, my senior year of high school. I ran cross country for the first time in my life. And I, um, I had a stress fracture that I learned about towards the end of the season. And I was, my goal was to um, ultimately play tennis in college. I was using cross country as a way to get in shape. And, uh, you know, I just felt like it, it couldn't hurt. One of my good friends was running and I, you know, he wanted me to run. So it was, that was the intention behind that. And then, um, you know, I got diagnosed with a stress fracture, three parts of my shin. And I was left at a standstill because I could, you know, I could do everything pretty much normally, but I knew I had to take time to recover. And it was my senior year. Like I said, I wanted to play basketball as well. And I, I thought I was all good, like a month after running. So, you know, basketball starts right back up. And then, you know, my ankle just, or my, my leg just never gets better. Um, and I was so lost because I couldn't compete. Like I, you know, I, I, I didn't want to play tennis at the level I was playing it at again because I wasn't there physically and, you know, my mind wasn't right. I knew my body was messed up. So, you know, there was a lot of empty space in my life for, you know, like three months or so in, in the middle of my senior year. And I actually picked up 2K on Players Lounge. I saw an ad and it started like, you know, super, super small scale. And then I got so into quick match and I started, you know, watching videos on how to be better, yada, yada, yada. Next thing I know, I'm playing 1v1 against um, guys who are in the 2K league. And that's how I was introduced to Pro-Am. Um, was, you know, through through one of them, they told me about the looking for group posts that take place on Xbox. So, I, you know, I... Um, auctioned myself off on one of those posts I had a, I remember I started off playing on a shooting shooting center stretch big it was in 2k18 and I just fell in love with the whole concept the 5v5 the team dynamic you know everything everything just made sense and you know I could I could sit still and do it and initially what 2k was for me was a was like a cop out to you know say I was getting stuff done but you know I wasn't working out I wasn't training anymore I wasn't as active socially I was you know, I was really just playing 2k a lot and um you know it was a, it was a blanket for you know about like a year and a half in my life and then I realized like hey you know I can I can do something with this and you know I can I can brand myself with this and you know I can really I can leverage it so I was uh like I said I, I was hurt my senior year and I was going to take a gap year after high school, regardless, I was going to go down to Florida and play tennis, but you know, obviously a change of change of scenery there. I couldn't play tennis anymore. So I decided to move down to Atlanta where I ended up teaching tennis. And that gave me a lot of time to just you know teach tennis, have time to myself and uh, play 2k. And I was just, I, I was in love with 2k. I was playing, you know, pretty much every day. And, and uh, that's, that's all I want to do. It was just, it was teach tennis, get home, play 2K. And it was really cool because, you know, I was living by myself and, and I felt somewhat independent, but I was, I felt like I was really getting stuff done. And, um, you know, fast forward about six months, it's my uh, next fall. I, I'm at, I end up at Arizona State with the intentions of, you know, just come, going back to real life, I guess you could say, and, you know, dropping the whole 2K thing and just going to school and um my roommate actually had a playstation and he was big into 2k and uh it was i think it was 2k20 was was yeah 2k20 was the 2k that just came out and just the school starting obviously 2k is releasing so he gets the new 2k and he's asking me to play him all the time and i'm like man like it's a slippery slope for me mm -hmm. like you know i know how how fast i can get back into it and next thing you know i'm at best buy i have my playstation and uh yeah, th that's that. So I qualified for uh, qualified for the league in the Bucks three v three tournament at my dorm in Arizona State. And uh, after I realized I was draft eligible, I called my parents and uh, my dad actually sat down and had lunch with Brendan Donahue because he didn't know he didn't want me to do it initially. And Brendan convinced him like it was worth doing. So my parents allowed me to take my winter semester off and um, come back home and just prepare. You know, just get in the best headspace as possible and, you know, reach out to coaches, whatever it was, brand myself a little more strategically. 
and you know, next thing you know, the draft rolls around, and I guess from there, that's history. Yeah, no, nah, I mean that's interesting to have your your parents sit down. I really get a full understanding of it, and then after they did, I mean, I take it they, they, that you had their full support yep. uh, throughout the process, right? One thousand percent. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, that, I mean, that, I, I, that's always good. I mean, because you had a lot of things going on uh, outside of the, the video game. So I, yeah, I there is a like my my parents told, my parents wanted me to leave Arizona State regardless and go to a different school, but you know, I was so it was kind of just like my. I'd played sports so competitively my whole life. I just, you know, I wanted to just have fun. And, you know, in hindsight, I wish I would have did it differently, but the experience of the 2K League is something that I, you can never replace. And like, I, oh, I shouldn't say that. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't have done it differently. But, you know, going to Arizona State was a pretty impulsive decision. So, I, you know, it was good. I got to leave regardless. Um, but it was only, it was a matter of whether I transfer or have, or have an opportunity like this. And uh, what was so unique about, the two, going to the 2K League season three last year was right when it started. That was like the beginning of COVID. So all my all my friends and everything were just stuck at home doing nothing. So it worked out great. Um, but yeah, it was definitely like a for those like two three years. I was it was a really weird period of my life. Now got gotcha. you. Now go back to 2020. Yep. And you're drafted number one now. Obviously, I mean, a lot of people knew how good you were, but but in your mind, like, did you automatically know that you was going number one? I really didn't. I like when I watch people play, it's hard for me to especially I remember in our draft class, there was like a bunch of people that were pretty similar. And like, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know Day Fry well at the time. I knew the Wizards had the number one pick and I didn't know Reese at all. You know, I knew Day Fry from whatever pro am just watching, but I didn't know I didn't know Reese, I didn't know Pat. So, you know, I thought it was a little bit far fetched initially. And uh the uh Day Fry reached out to me um I would say October, like uh, after they after the draft lottery. And like just just to um just to talk. And I remember we were in a, we were in a party just talking and I, and I was still at school, but we were, you know, chopping it up and nothing, nothing too crazy. But, you know, I, I that was the first time I learned that, that I was of interest to them. And I thought like, I knew myself, I, I believe that I was going to be a good candidate. Like I thought, you know, I had what it takes to, you know, to elevate five people, especially in that setting. So you know, I was I was all in for it. I know there was a bunch of people who were hesitant about going to D.C. initially. Um, and, you know, they wanted to I, I, like people were trying to stack teams with the picks and, you know, whatever it was. But, you know, I, I wanted to I wanted to just go all in. I was leaving school for this. I subsidized two years of my life for this, three years of my life for this. Like, I, you know, I wanted to go for it. And um, it worked out amazing because Monumental was just so welcoming and like they gave me a platform to speak and so many opportunities to show face and to brand myself and I felt like you know within three or four months I was totally comfortable on camera like my interview antics they were all on like their the care our camera guys were always helping me like you know I noticed when you say this or when you do this your hands do x y and z whatever it was they were so transparent and it was such like a positive process for me even off the game like I'm so happy I went one and I'm so happy I you know there was that little bit of extra pressure because I learned so much about myself and so much about the way you know people are supposed to carry themselves and handle things that I don't think I would have had the opportunity to learn otherwise gotcha gotcha now you mentioned something interesting you didn't know you didn't know Day Fry you didn't know Reese you said Day Fry reached out to you but how how what made the relationship work like what like what was it like playing with day fry and then how how did that relationship blossom into something that was unknown in the beginning but as time went on you guys got closer and closer yeah so i think you know at a super simple core i think it was just a respect thing initially like you know i respected him he respected me and in practice, he was bringing it every day, like just, just 
all in. And there was something I really appreciated about that. And I didn't realize how much I appreciated it the first month or so. Like I thought it was just, you know, overbearing, like, why, you know, why are we, why is it, it's not that serious. It's just a scrimmage, whatever it was. But, um, you know, next thing we know, we're, I remember playing the tip off and we lost to the Cavs. We didn't, even, we didn't make the money rounds. And I had like, you know, I, I totally just blew it. And um, I was like, all right, you know, like th this is my wake up call. You know, I see the bigger picture here. We were still doing all right in the regular season standing. So I knew we had, we were going to get another shot. I just, uh, you know, I kind of put it on myself to take practice more seriously to, you know, take what he preached into real consideration. So following that, um, you know, we weren't, the funny thing is, is like, we were the first week or so before everything she got shut down. We were with each other every day. It was so fun, whatever. And then after that, I was on the 10th floor, Dave Fry, Reese, Brandon, and um, who was it? Who else was on the floor? Dave Fry, Reese, Brandon. Who am I missing? Who was on our team season three? Me, 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 me. Oh, I Justin, Justin. Okay, so it's. It was uh, it was uh, Ron, uh, Dave Fry and Awkward, um, and then Reese and Brandon on the fourth floor, and then Deanie and I were on the tenth floor. And like during quarantine, I was so checked out. I had like like I all we would play the game, and my sleep schedule was terrible. Like I was barely hanging out with those guys, honestly. And um, I was and like it wasn't it wasn't it was reflective on the game. Like you know we weren't in sync or whatever. And um, I remember like. Ryan and Brandon were always hanging out or uh, Dave Fry and B Rich were always hanging out. And uh, Justin was like, you know, trying to facilitate everyone to hang out. I was like, I was like, yeah, like I'll, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm with come going to kick it, but like, you know, there's not much to, there's not much to say at this point. Like no one's doing anything. Like we don't even, you know, we're just yelling at each other over the discord in a scrimmage and like nothing's getting done. But after the turn, um, I remember we lost to the Raptors in the finals. And uh, I remember going back to the day for, I think day for, had a podcast or an interview with um, somebody, I think it might've been with the league. It might've been on like a talk show or whatever. And he was just super complimentary of like the process and how I remember he was saying like how he appreciated the work that I put in to get us here, like in contrast to the, to the work we did prior to the, tip off the first tournament so like you know he was appreciating me I appreciate him obviously he was killing on the court um and you know he was he was bringing a level of accountability and expectation to every practice which is like you know you can't you know how hard that is like you know, every day in day out um so like you know we kind of just grew on each other like we both had like these intangibles whether it was, you know, on or off the game that we were kind of growing off each other and learning from each other from. And if it came to a point where we knew each other so well that like, we didn't even have to, like, there was no, how do I deliver this message? It was just like, you know, whatever, whatever we're thinking, we're saying like, you know, and then like afterwards we're analyzing it like, okay, maybe we could have said this better. Maybe this would have been more transparent, whatever it was. But we got to the point where we were so like, effective in communication with one another and I think that was like between all five of us honestly that there was no nothing on the court that could break us so anything off the court which we obviously we had we had a we had a great team we were all good friends off the court like it just added to it and like it just it just got better and better and better and better and by playoff time we were like everything stuff started to open up a little bit um and we were just you know we were with each other all the time and you know all that work on the court that we put in prior to was like you know that the the base was there now we were just like appreciating one of those company and then like you know when you mix the two together you're invincible so that's what it became and then you know obviously coming into this season we were like you know we lost Reese and Reese was a huge part of our team last year and um we were we were at a standstill at the draft like we didn't you know we didn't really know what we wanted to do and yeah the beginning of the season we had a lineup that we like honestly weren't too sure of just because we had we were putting Dean in a position he never played before and we won with him at, at the power forward last year so it was like a big adjusting period and I remember like you know him and I talked a lot about like you know the real best way to go about this not like the most impulsive like okay you know like let's just like 
move people all around, whatever. Like we really thought about it. And like, that's kind that was our like biggest growth period to me. It was like, you know, from disagreeing. I remember our biggest disagreement in season three, for example, was he wanted to take, he wanted to win every scrimmage and I wanted to practice things in scrimmages. And like, we went from disagreeing on little stuff like that to like trying to literally do everything in our power to make everybody in the team want to play for one another in season four. And like, you know, at that point it was just like, but like, it was just, it was exponential growth. Um, so I would say, you know, playing with a fry was, I learned so much about, you know, the way to practice. Um, I know he always preached him and always Justin always preached, hold yourself to the highest standard possible, no matter what you do. So like, you know, even, even coming into practice off the court, like anytime you have a wizard shirt on, like, you know, you're, it's bigger than you, obviously. Um, and I think like we, like I said, we just naturally grew off one another and it became, it became like, we were like a two headed monster. And, uh, it was, just, it was, a, I'll, I'll never forget playing with, with Day Fry, with Awkward, with Brandon, Reese, Dini, Braun, like those guys just, you know, they elevated me as a person. And, you know, I feel so much better about myself and, you know, in my confidence to accomplish things and to get things done, you know, even off of 2K than I, uh, than I did coming in for sure. No, nah, that's uh, good to hear. And, and, and it's interesting because, I remember meeting Awkward at a 2K League event over at OS Studios, and he was he was awkward. Like, I mean, he didn't really – Yeah, like, yeah. He was shy, like, and everything. And then, like, to watch him – and then we're going to talk about this later, but, like, when, to, to see him from that point and then see how he was when we played in the playoffs, uh, just his, his confidence, like, seeing it in person. That was one thing. I seen it last year, but, like, it's different watching it on screen and – and you not really feeling it or anything like that, but to see him in person on the stage and had his its uber amount of confidence uh, oozing out. I mean, it was it was of course, you know, it's not the best thing when you're not on you when you're on the other side. But you know, just from a growth standpoint and me watching players uh, mature, I it it was a sight to see, man. Yeah, Justin grew so much, and he was, he, like I said, in season three, he was the facilitator of, you know, emphasizing, like, really hanging out with one another before we understood the importance of that and before we even really wanted to, like, it, you know. And um, so Justin did, has done so much for us, obviously, and he's, like, he's the most, I'm sure you've heard a million times, but just genuine kid, and, like, he's just such a hard worker, so never takes shortcuts, and that stuff adds up and it becomes contagious. And like, you know, he's like, he, he was a huge, huge, huge part of like our culture change in DC. Now, of course, I mean, you're part of history, uh, back to back champions. Uh, you know, what will, I mean, of course, championships are championships, but to you, like what, what, what was the, the better feeling that the first one or getting the second? One? Honestly, the first one. I, I felt like if we didn't win the second one, like it was, it was really my fault. The first one, I didn't know what to expect. I thought the Raptors were invincible. I thought the Kings were invincible. They were beating us every scrimmage. And then once we got to the finals, I was like, you know, like, you know, something's got to give, like, there's no way this is really going to happen. And I didn't really believe in myself from like, as a 2k player in season three, like I should have, um, like I knew, I knew I could compete, but like in terms of just coming, like coming off these screens, making all these right reads, green, like, you know, Kenny was just at a whole other level. Like, you know, Keena was playing, all those guys were killing it. And like, you know, we had a super tough schedule going in. And I actually have a really funny story in season three. Uh, I had a flight. I was going out to Utah with a bunch of my buddies and I had a flight booked for the day after we played the Raptors and I booked it. <laughs> I, I booked it before we played the Kings. Cause like, I was like, no way we're beating both of them. But like, obviously I, I didn't tell anybody. Um, they all know now, but like, it was just really funny. My point is I did not expect to be where we were in Dallas. I was like, you know, like it's go time. Like no one, no one's beating us. Like that, that's just, that's just what it is. Um, and I kind of knew that like coming into Dallas, like I, you know, it was, I was going to go out on my terms or, Cause I knew it was probably my last season too. So 
it was yeah. funny. But yeah, season three was like when we won that. I remember I was just like I was genuinely in such shock, and like that, that whole night was just so. I was just speechless. Like I remember, like you know, because that year was so draining, and just to come out on top and knowing I could go home, like you know, with what I came there for, was just so rewarding. And I know all my friends and family were watching it. It was on you know ESPN too, and they were all texting me videos. It was just so cool. It was it was super fulfilling. Um, but yeah, to be totally honest, season three was cooler for me. No, I mean, I you you say draining, and it makes me think about the six months that uh, you know the the season of an NBA 2K League pro yep. you know I want you to talk about that for those who haven't uh made the league what are, are those who who not you know fully aware of, of how the league operates this how how draining is it during that six months yeah it, it, uh, dra- draining is the perfect word for sure I also think you know part of that is just you know, the stress you put on yourself. I think the best thing that you can do is constantly maintain perspective. And the best ways to do that are, you know, hang out with your team outside of 2K. So obviously, you know, just enjoy one another's genuine company and then just have your mind and body, like the way you want your mind and body to be like, you you know, you work out, you meditate, you think, you reflect, like you're, you talk better, you're, you're more confident, you have less anxiety, all that stuff is reflective on the game, whether or not people admit it or acknowledge it or not. Um, but if you let the game and you're just, you become a, you become a puppet to the, to the practice and like you, you lose the bigger picture and you stop appreciating what you really are there to do. And you're, you know, you're on the, you're in the mentality of, Hey, I want to get, go to practice so I can leave practice. Like that's when it becomes draining because then there's no, there's no highs. It's just, it's, it's only lows. And um, then, and yeah, it's a long, long six months. And, you know, to top that off, if that's your mentality and, you know, you're not, you're not appreciating what you do and you're taking things for granted, then it's like, you're gonna probably not going to win. So you're in a tough spot. So that doesn't help either. Obviously, you know, winning cures everything. That's just the reality of it. Um, but yeah, these, uh, these six months, these even even prior to the league, that's the other thing people are like realize is like it's such a tough process to get in and it's becoming harder and harder, obviously, that like you gotta you gotta maintain that balance for 12 months out the year. You gotta find your balance. Obviously, everybody's different, but like you know, you just can't take your mind or your body for granted physically and um that's that's my biggest advice for like you know balancing those six months. Got you, got you, got you. Now, big big news, you know, as of late, uh, you announced your retirement. Um, you know, the, I call this episode the jack the jack of all trades, but the the one thing that you've been able to master is winning, uh, and and the jack of all trades is because most of the time, you know, when people speak of PGs. You know, your name never really came up. Uh, they, people respected you, but I don't think that people always, you know, gave you the acclaim that they give a lot of other PGs and things of that nature. But, and that's neither here nor there, because at the end of the day, uh, the bigger, in the bigger scheme of things, it's all about winning. And I want to, you know, two part question uh, before we get into your retirement. Like, what, what makes you better? than most of the point guards that you faced throughout your career? Um, I think coming into the game, I think a lot of these kids are super, like, focused on themselves, and they don't even know it. And it makes playing against them super easy, for, for me at least, because it's like, hey, I know if, you know, we take them out the game, then their team is going to be taken out the game. Like, like you know, I, the reason I feel like I've had a lot of success, obviously I've had a great team, but I feel like, you know, we've also made each other better throughout. And like, you know, if I'm not playing good, my main focus at that point is to help the other five guys or four guys on my team play better. So it's like, you know, I, I feel like it's hard to take me out the game. Whereas like a lot of these other guys are, they get, they might be better than me, but like, you know, it's for four quarters, are they going to be better than me? So it's like, you know, even if they win three out of four, if that fourth quarter they blow up, then 
you know, I, I, it's, it's, uh, I have an advantage there. Um, but I think, you know, and this is something I've talked about a lot, what, what people do in practice. And I noticed, especially in the scrimmages in the 2k league is like the whole notion of, Oh, it's a scrimmage. I don't take it seriously. Or, yeah, I'm just going to come out here and work on my shots and just jack for these shots. Or, you know, if we lose or if we're down 30, let's quit, whatever. It's like, I feel like every moment in, in every scrimmage, like there's, there's a chance to learn something. There's a chance to get better. And I think we really capitalized on that season three and season four. And like, we just became so good situationally that there was never like a moment where we were like, what do we do? Or like, we're panicking. Like, you know, we've been there before, even if it's a scrimmage, like we're down eight with two minutes left. Okay. Like let's be calculated about what we do here. Like, you know, let's, let's, let's take twos early. Let's put pressure on them. Let's, you know, let's run X, Y, and Z defense. And like, let's, let's try and make somebody else make a play. Whatever it was, we were, we were always thinking. And, um, you know, I think a lot of point guards just get lost in like that whole idea that, you know, you're only as good as the people you, you play with. So like, you know, if you're not making those guys better then you're selling your team short, and that's where I think that translation in how people determine who's a good 2K player or not gets lost. Cause you know, there's one thing to do what you're doing as an individual, but like, you know, there's not too many great athletes in anything that are, uh, that aren't talked about off the court. And like, you know, whether it be their work ethic or their locker room presence, whatever it is, all that stuff matters. The intangibles matter. And uh, I think that's like the, the difference, honestly in the in the two in the point guard skill gap gotcha now as i was mentioning before about about the retirement i mean i'm some people you know in your camp knew i mean and uh speculating and, and things of that nature but you officially coming out and announcing your retirement um obviously one of the best two-year runs uh one of the the, the our first retire official retirement was uh kuda uh, after he won a championship and uh, he's went on to do a lot of major things in his own, in his own right. Um, but for you, uh, what play, what played a, a part in you uh, choosing to retire? And is, is this, it would this be the last of anybody seeing JBM on the sticks? So to answer the last part of the question first, in terms of the two, going back to two K league, I don't think I'll ever go back. I also don't like, you know, even if I really wanted to, I think if I took a year off of 2K, I couldn't. Like, you know, these guys are playing day in, day out. It's it's super hard. It's super competitive. And, you know, I, to say like, oh, I can just jump back in a year. I, you know, I don't think I'm doing the league justice. Um, you know, it's I don't think I'd be able to compete at that level again. But, you know, I love playing 2K on my free time. Like, I, I love Pro-Am. Um, I'm sure I'll play. Um, uh, I entered a uh, pro-am league. I'm, I'm using a center account though. So like, you know, I'm just trying to mix things up and just appreciate, you know, just playing the game for what it is. I'm playing with a couple of my, uh, my buddies from home and it's really fun. Um, but you know, it's for the, for the retirement and, and the reason for retiring, my thing was in the league, it's been tough for me to monetize personal branding. Um, there's been a couple things that I've tried to do that were tough to follow through with just because of the, the league's guidelines with these teams and, you know, what you can make money off of and what, what you're actually allowed to brand during the season. So that, you know, that was tough for me. And then, you know, I think just in a bigger picture, I feel like I hit a ceiling and I came in and did everything that I wanted to do. And I felt like, you know, doing another year would just be, you know, just delaying a year of my life. I know I have to move on eventually. And I think five years from now, like I would appreciate my decision right now a ton, you know, right now, like I said, it's an adjusting period, but you know, it's one of those things that I need to go to school, like, or, you know, I I'm, I'm pretty set on going to school and it's tough to, you know, I don't think I'd be able to go on a campus at 24, or whatever it is. Like, you know, I kind of got to bang that stuff out now, get my degree and, um, you know, I just, I'm so fascinated by just like, you know, the social media and the esports industries and, you know, the direction that the market is going right now and, and how, how open 
everything is to growth and to substantial change. Like I think obviously, you know, with foreign policies and with crypto, like everything is just changing. Our currencies, our way we go about things, our you know, our social customs, whatever they are, everything is, you know, we're in a renaissance period right now. And I think to be at the forefront of that from and have that perspective in esports, which is, you know, obviously a growing market. Um, I think I would be naive not to try and capitalize on that. So, you know, I'm just, I really want to lead, you know, marketing efforts and some of my own and use what I know about being a competitive player and market that to, you know, people trying to do the same and orgs that may, may have a lot of capital, but might not have, you know, the right strategy behind their marketing or the way they're going about things, whatever it is. So that was like my initial, like, you know, like biggest reason to move on. Gotcha. 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 Well, I mean, you put on a heck of a run for these last two years. I've seen a lot of, uh, Humor on the timeline when you made the announcement as uh, far as some, you know, some people like, man, I finally feel like I got a shot. Uh, you know, they, oh, yeah. it was tired of you dominating and, and everything like that. But I mean, phenomenal run uh, you guys put on and definitely as a from as a competitor. I mean, yeah, everybody wants to win. But at the end of the day, you have to, I mean, true competitors respect the, the work and, and what other people have done in their respective sport. And I mean, and that's what I'm doing to you right now is, and, and what you, Day Fry, Reese, uh, Be Rich, especially, I mean, shout out to Be Rich. I mean, cause he, uh, I'll never forget Be Rich because he qualified uh, for the combine in our, or in, in our your tournament. tournament. So uh, that, that call and the relationship that we built over time and uh, him only being really from up the road in Kentucky. I mean, it, it's uh, we've always talked and, and managed to have a great relationship. But uh, similar to Justin, like just so genuine, like you know how it is. It's just yeah. super easy to play with people like that. And then Ludini, somebody who uh, I eventually I'll, I'll get him on the pod too. But I've known him. I've watched him come on the scene, and uh, he he's had a phenomenal career, and 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 one that's going to be definitely hard to top. Uh, when when he nah, decides, <laughs> Dini's on that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just, could take the easy right road out, but no one no <laughs> one's touching Dini. <laughs> all right, all right. But now nah, you guys had a, had a heck of a run, man, and definitely something that to be modeled after. I think, um, and I've said this before that I mean, people talk about wanting to win, but if they're not willing to sacrifice themselves and, and put the we before me, and that's with everything. Uh, yep. it, used to, it used to be a saying that one of the co one of the coaches and actually like my brother, uh, when we coached high school together, he used to say, you know, it, it starts from the way you get out the bus, the, the, the way you walk into the gym, you know, how you prepare and, and everything. So it's not just something, it's not just a switch that you just turn on and off. It has yeah, to be exactly. Like, exactly. All the time thing. But yeah, at, th at this point of the show, uh, OG wants to know answer open and honestly as possible biggest influence i would say my family honestly what motivates you i want to be unique the best part about being in the nba 2k league the blank canvas you have to start the season and like you know just honestly the process of you know just growing as a team throughout favorite your favorite nba 2k player that wasn't on Worcester district gaming i'm gonna go bear mama okay um favorite quote Stomp me. I don't have a favorite quote. <laughs> I, I honestly, if you said, if someone said, I'll give you a million dollars to name a quote, I don't think I would quote win a million dollars. Oh, man. That, that'd be the first time Jack fumbled the, fumbled the bag <laughs> with the money on the line. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, fa favorite actor or actress? Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. Uh, favorite 2K? 2K 20. Okay. 
Favorite genre of music? Pop, but like honestly, like R and B also. I have a weird music taste, super diverse. Gotcha. I, I can relate. I can relate. Favorite movie of all time? Taken, the first taken. Gotcha. Um favorite NBA 2K League moment. Winning the championship season three, for sure. Okay. Favorite place to hang out in DC? Uh, probably bullpen. <laughs> what is that a bar? <laughs> uh, not really. It's like a, it's kind of like, it's like an outside bar music venue. They, uh, they play, they have like a bunch of projected TVs. They play the NAS games. Okay. Um, it's just like a, it's just like a fun, great vibes. It's, it's, it's nice. Got you, got you. To Navy Yard. Um, before we get out of here, um, what would you tell young players who are trying to make the league and those who are trying to stay in the league? For making the league, um, you know, like I said, obviously it's getting harder and harder. I think just, you know, brand what you can offer outside of 2K and, you know, show coaches, show players why you would make them better people and why you can give them something that they haven't seen before off of the game. Um, I think, you know, it's pretty easy to mold somebody who wants to learn, um, you know, who's done something in their life that required a lot of work that required, you know, a real dedication. Um, so just, yeah, brand that. And then, you know, for staying in the league, I think it's, you know, obviously you, you don't have to deal with getting in the league, any of that, like you have to, you know, it's the same concept, like make the people around you better. Just make yourself a irreplaceable asset to a team off of the court, like, or, you know, on the court, obviously you need to perform, but like, just, you know, make the people around you better and, you know, create an environment or be like a propri proprietor in an environment where everybody wants to play for the next person and everybody appreciates you know, another's company. Got you, got you, got you. Now, what's next for JBM? So I'm doing – I actually just got a uh, LLC registered yesterday. And um, so that that allows me to have, you know, a little more flexibility in taking on, like, some some projects that I'm working on now. So I, I'm working on a, uh, a video game, which is a modification to RuneScape, which is a, you know, it's a different type of server. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's based around RuneScape. If you know what that is, it's sort of like a, it's a pixelated game. Um, so I'm, you know, paying somebody to develop that for me. And then, you know, we're going to market that accordingly. So that's, that's a big project. Then I'm working on a uh, social media app that's, location based and it's just facilitating nightlife i would say it's pretty comparable to yelp um but it's a little more user friendly so that's in the uh you know that's in the marketing stage as well i already have that developed and uh i'm just trying to i'm playing a lot of basketball i'm trying to get back into really good shape you know maybe this is far-fetched but i, I want to walk on next year so we'll see we'll see how that goes but that's a goal i have and, you know something that's going to keep me working hard and, and grounded, you know, on, you know, at a fitness level. And then um, I honestly want to just become a lot more worldly. You know, I feel like I lost my interest in like, you know, just what's going on around the world and even the U S and I want to just become a lot more on top of things now that I have the time, and you know, that my mind, that that space in my mind is, uh, is free. Gotcha. 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 Well, Thank you, JBM, for coming on the pod, man. Appreciate it. Definitely going to be looking out for you doing some uh, big things, man. Appreciate your time in the league, and uh, you provided some, uh, some, some unforgettable moments and obviously reached some heights that's going to inspire a lot of other people within the league and on the outside trying to get in the league. So uh, you know me. I always got your back. I stay in touch, and uh, hit me up if you need me. Thank you, Kurt. Likewise. Hey, hey before you get out of here, though, before you get out, uh, let everybody know where they can follow you, uh, you know, and keep up with what you're doing. Yeah, so all my social medias are J-A-C-K-M-A-S-C-O-N-E, Jack Mascone. Um, 
and yeah, that's uh, follow those. I actually, I'm on the fence about starting a, uh, starting like a selling picks for for bets and stuff. So if you guys want to make money, tap in as well. <laughs> that's it. Hey, yeah. that, that, that sounds all so familiar, man. I, I, uh, I know, but I, I, I'm so fifty fifty on it. <laughs> Well, Batman, well, good luck to you. And like I said, thanks for coming on the pod, bro. All right, Kurt. I appreciate it. We'll stay in touch, man. I want to thank everybody who tuned in for this episode. Remember, if you watched on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you listen on any other platform, uh, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, make sure you subscribe to those channels. Leave a review. Helps us out a lot. Make sure you follow the OG Two Cents podcast on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also follow myself, OG King Kurt, on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's OG King Kurt. And also make sure you follow my TikTok page as well. Um, you can go to www.ogkingkurt.com for everything the OG Two Cents podcast and everything OG King Kurt. Shout out to my team, Strider Visuals. Box, box graphics, Cy Evermore and Matrix for continuing to make the OG Two Cents podcast what it is today. Um, also, you can don't forget to go to the OG King Kurt YouTube page and subscribe to that channel as well. Uh, you can catch me every Saturday and Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Black News channel. And that's with Esports Extra every Saturday and Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's with host Larry Ridley. The crew, um, Kelly Wells Brinkley, uh, Brandon Bell, Antonio Williams, Durham Rowell, and producer extraordinaire Kevin Mamuzet. And that's every Saturday and Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Black News Channel. Esports Extra, where we talk sports, traditional gaming, and culture. Make sure you go to www.skulls.com slash OG King Kurt. For all OG Two Cents podcasts and OG King Kurt merch and apparel, uh, use the code OG15% for 15% off of your order. Uh, if you happen to purchase anything, you can post a pic of it, tag us, and we'll be sure to mention you in the next podcast episode. Uh, make sure you tune in to next week's episode. And remember, if it makes sense, it's an OG Two Cents. OG out. Put this work in, fellas, and much, much, much love to the entire 2K community for always showing me love. Without y'all, we wouldn't be here. Yard, yard.